Hello and welcome to Better Reading TV. Uh, today we've got a very special guest, uh, very special. I think he's pretty special. He's Paul West and he's from River Cottage, Australia. He has written this cookbook. He's quite yeah. extraordinary for a very young man. And also I did a little bit of prep for you, Paul. Oh, yeah. I decided to um, push myself a little bit and make a dessert out of your cookbook. Oh, okay. And I have. Uh, I'm actually going to get you to flip it and to serve it a bit later on. Is it on. what I can smell in the oven there? It is indeed. Now, talk to me. I really like how you discovered food and how you came about it. And you weren't brought up in a family of food lovers. No. No. We are, for, for my family growing up, food was always a very utilitarian thing. For a long time, I think, for, and for a lot of people, food is fuel. Meat and three veg, but, but food was never something that in my family was viewed as, uh, you know, viewed, viewed as something to, to, that was exotic and, and, mm. and an art and things that could be explored. It was just food on the table. So uh, I left home. I, t I had a couple of years of, you know, trying this and trying that. I found myself in Tasmania and I'd been, I'd been on the road for about three months and at that stage I was um, dead broke. Uh, and I was, I was kind of, you know, traveling by myself and living pretty rough. Mm. I was like, I was a bit, I was in need of a family fix, you know, like, and I was sick of staying in hostels or on the outskirts of town or whatever. Uh, and this person told me uh, at a hostel I was staying, they told me about Woofing, which uh, is an international organisation. It's an acronym that stands for Willing Workers on Organic Farms. Mm. And the basic premise is you exchange four hours work for food and accommodation. I thought, that's great. It sounds like no a money. fair deal. It's, it's great. It's yeah, a, it yeah. is a great deal. And yeah. I really can't recommend it to people enough. But anyway, I, so the first farm that I stayed on was um, uh, in a place called Paradise. So, and he was an old French bloke called Gilles. So he was a retired carpenter, so he was a craftsman. So when I stayed with Gilles, I was, uh, I was exposed to this, this totally different world of farming that was warm and alive and he had a huge veggie garden and it was thronging with life and it had a beautiful palm fruit orchard and he had sheep and cattle and pigs and ducks and geese and I'm like, all of it, it was like a menagerie, it was like yeah. a garden of Eden and I had no idea that that's what farming could be. I'd never been exposed yeah. to that way of life. At 21, without a, with rudderless, you know, I was directionless, I, that I just instantly stuck to that ideal and that concept. I'm like, this guy has the recipe for life. I thought I had a pretty good handle on growing, so I yeah. thought now I need to learn to cook. Yeah. So I, um, at 23, I took on a chef's apprenticeship, which was pretty old. I began in Newcastle, right. where I lived. Yeah, love Newcastle. I um, chased, progressively chased better and better, better kitchens until I uh, found myself working at Voodamont in Melbourne. It was such, a, a, it was another world. This sprawling chaotic beast that was just always running it you know 100 percent and i remember you'd go out if you run out of a garnish or something and you knew someone in the restaurant had it and you'd come out and you'd have sweat <laughs> peeling off everything of your face and you'd be bright red for because it was a furnace in there you know it was like my face looked like this kind of thing I'd, and you'd come up and the restaurant because it's this three hat place is like this yeah. calm like everything's like oh, yeah. yes, yes, on the past it's like service and, and you're like and you'd come in and you'd like and all the, the customers would look oh where the hell did that guy come from and you'd go over the ladder section i need to pass right now scoop it out and run off you know it was so it was uh and it, it, you, you, i learned to survive and then you went to uh, so then i went back to newcastle because i i wanted to try to find that balance i i, I reassessed and i went yeah. no this that's not what i want i want to i want to be growing and i want to be connected to my food uh, and then that's when uh, Alicia's cousin told us about the casting call for River Cottage oh, Australia. Yeah. So I was hugely familiar with River Cottage yeah. already. So they said, they're, they're looking for a host, you should apply. And I'm like, oh yeah. It was an online application initially. Yeah. And I got a call the next day. They hadn't even seen a photo of me at that stage. Right. They're like, well, we, we, we love you. Yeah. Peace, it was yeah. great. That's so engaging. You're, it's, you're obviously passionate about this. But you know, it's a show, so we, we need to see you before you know we can take it any further. Can you can you get a handy cam and film film something? River Cottagey, being a chef, the only day off I had was Christmas Day, so so I filmed Christmas lunch, cooking Christmas lunch. My oh. my partner was the camera yeah. camera lady, yeah. and uh, and then I edited it together with some freeware nice, that you. that night, and because uh, it was the only day I had, yeah. uh, and sent it off, and. They were here on you are. Yeah, here I am. Now listen, I think um, we've got the. Um, oh, what have you what have you got in there, Cheryl? Shall I shall I just flick through the book? Oh, uh, is that what we're having? Is that what we're ha is that, are we about to eat that? There you go. So, do you want to do the honours? I'd love to. So, yeah, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, let's ready let's do it. I'll just sit here and wait to be served. I hope I don't burn myself here. Oh yes. Is it good? It looks fantastic. <laughs> oh, yep. 
I think you've done a good job there, Cheryl. Do you think? And now here we go. Here's the, here we go. Here's the, the difficult See, one. See, I was worried about flipping it. Especially when it's full of what's most likely very hot caramel. Gosh. Oh, wow. have a look oh, at a that. It's brown, but it's it's still good. Yeah, I'd like I'd call that strongly caramelized. Strongly caramelized. <laughs> but on All the right. same hand, I like you know I, I don't I don't I that's, I not just, that's not burnt. That's not burnt. burnt. It's no. just very very caramelized. Let's call this fuel for pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that's okay. better. If it's going to fuel, you may as well fuel the senses. We got it. Mmm. That's a great recipe, Cheryl. I'll we'll have to get that off. No, you answer. will. Well, do you know what? You need to buy the cookbook. Oh, oh. Well, that's <laughs> that's where I've got it from. What anyway, thanks, Paul. Thanks for being with us. And thanks for joining us on Better Reading TV. Thanks so much for welcoming me into your home. I appreciate it. You're great company. How lucky am I? That, that. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs>